All right, guys, let's take a look at today's lesson. So we're going to be looking at calculus topics that have to do with exponentials and logarithms. That's our, our goal for today. Uh, we'll really have three different topics we're going to be looking at. One is the special exponential limit. And so let's kind of go back in our memories to, um, if you recall, in trig, we had a special limit. We had a couple of them. But let's think about when we were going to uh, limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x. Do we remember that limit? Right, what was the answer to that limit? It was 1, right? And recall that for this limit to work, these locations right here had to match. Remember talking about that? They had to match. So if that was sine 2x, it needed to be over 2x. Remember? That is the exact same way this limit works. These two locations have to match. If they don't match, then the limit won't work. Okay, so if, for example, if I had e to the 5x minus 1, I would have to have 5x in the denominator for it to work. Okay, just like the special limit that we learned previously. Those locations have to match. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. You do need to memorize that limit. I'm not going to give you that one um, on a quiz or a test, so uh, you would need to memorize that. All right, so that's the special limit for today with exponentials. The other thing, uh, we have a couple of other topics we're going to be looking at. One is logistic growth. And this is a BC only topic. So those of you that are going to BC would, would be looking at this. Um, what is it? So with exponential growth, we learn that, you know, it just basically grows forever, right? We go to infinity. But sometimes that doesn't really make sense in certain circumstances. Like if you had a pond and you were going to put fish in it, would you be able to have an infinite number of fish in the pond? I mean, that doesn't make sense, right? There would be no, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So we have other models for things like that, and they're called logistic growth. What that model looks like is there's like a limiting factor, you know, and the graph kind of looks like that it approaches a particular number that it can't pass, which makes more sense if you have limited resources, right? You wouldn't have an infinite number of something. So that's the model that we're looking at. We'll just be doing word problems with them, you know, with your calculator. You don't have to memorize this formula this year. Uh, not necessary. I'm going to point out something important, though, in the formula. Well, there's several important things, but just for us, this top number, if it's written in this form, this L, that's what this is. That's the limiting number. So if your formula is written like this, then that top number is going to be the limiting number. Just a kind of a, a cool thing. You don't, again, you don't have to memorize it. Just kind of a cool thing. And lastly, we will look again at linear approximation. This is probably the third or fourth time we've done linear approximation this year. I'm hoping that we do so much linear approximation that next year when the, you know you go over linear approximation, you're like, ah, yeah, I know what that is. And I'm not going to forget what that is. Uh, we are going to use a tangent line to approximate a value of a function. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to use our calculator to find the derivative. We're not going to be um, doing the derivatives of logarithms and exponentials by hand yet. Okay, so that will be a calculator problem as well. All right, any questions on the concepts before we move to the examples? Okay, so let's flip to our next slide and let's go through our examples. Okay, so the first one, we are given this formula. Maybe you recognize it. Hopefully you do. That's the definition of the derivative. So the answer that we're going to get is going to be the derivative. It's going to be some kind of a function. What we're asked to do, we're given the function right here. It's e to the 2x, and we're asked to find the limit. Basically, they're asking us to find the derivative of that using definition of the derivative. So let's do that. Oh, uh, This portion tells us to open up wherever the x is and insert an x plus h. So I have the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the 2, and I'm going to open up where that x is, and I'm going to insert an x plus h. That's this portion. Then minus. It just wants me on this, just copy down f of x. Whatever f of x is, I copy it down. It's e to the 2x. And all of that is over h. 
So that is simply plugging into the definition of the derivative. That's all we've done. Now we have to solve that limit and kind of keep in the back of your mind the special limit that we just, just learned. Uh, it's kind of a mess right now. I don't really see what we can do. Why don't we go ahead and distribute the two? Let's kind of clean that up a bit. So the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the 2x plus 2h minus e to the 2x over h. Okay, we got rid of the parentheses. That's a good step. So let's kind of focus on this more complex one. There's really nothing going on here that's going to be helpful. Uh, let's focus on this. We have exponents that are being added. What if we went backwards? What if we went backwards here? What would have happened to get exponents to be added? Wouldn't those, we have two bases that were multiplied, right? When we multiply bases, we add. So why don't we go backwards? And why don't we go back to the multiplication? Why don't we split that into two terms? Um, so we limit h goes to 0. So I'm going to take this and split it up to e to the 2x times e to the 2h minus e to the 2x all over h. Okay, so that's just moving backwards. Hopefully we're kind of comfortable with that. Now let's see what possibilities we have. I actually have one term here and one term here. I'm looking for maybe something to factor out. Do you see something common in both terms? See how this term has an e to the 2x and this term has an e to the 2x? Why don't we factor that out? So we have the limit as h goes to 0. We're going to factor the e to the 2x out. And we're going to be left with e to the 2h minus 1 all over h. Okay, we're getting closer, closer to using that special limit. We're really pretty close. What I would like to do, and you don't have to do this, but I would like to split that limit into two different limits, just so that we're really clear about what's going on. So I would like to, it's, these are being multiplied, I would like to split it to um, limit h goes to 0 of e to the 2x times limit h goes to 0 of e to the 2h minus 1 over h. Now let's talk about that for just a moment. So if I multiplied e to the 2x times this fraction, would I not get what I started with? Right, one of the most common mistakes that I see students do here is put another h under this. Why, we wouldn't want to do that, right? This is multiplication. We would only put another h under here if this was addition, right? So that we have a common denominator kind of thing. So please don't get those two mixed up. This is multiplication. I just want to make sure when I multiply these, I get back where I was and, and I'm going to. All right, so we okay with that? All right, this first limit is actually pretty easy because, you know, this is e to the 2x, <laughs> and x really doesn't care where h is going. It's like, oh, that's nice. h, you can go to 0. I'm not going to go. H can, uh, x can do what it wants, right? There's no effect. e to the 2x is not affected at all by h going to 0. So the answer to that limit is just going to be e to the 2x. I mean, there's no nothing that can happen. This is the limit we need to focus on for just a moment. This is almost, almost a special limit. But this has a 2h, and this just has an h. So I need a 2 here. And we know we can't just arbitrarily stick a 2 somewhere, right? We've got to multiply by 1. We've got to multiply by 2 over 2. So I'm going to multiply this whole numerator by 2 over 2. So the numerator gets multiplied by 2 over 2. Okay. So when I do that, then we can see that this portion of it is the special limit. Right? That is the special limit part. So now we're ready to take the limit. We can take the limit. So the limit from this first one is e to the 2x times, we have a 2, times, and the answer to this special limit we learned on the other page is 1. Right? So our final answer would be 2e to the 2x. So basically what we have done is we have found the derivative of e to the 2x. The derivative of e to the 2x is 2e to the 2x. That's using, um, if there's a, something called the chain rule that you will learn next year. You would be using the chain rule if you were going to do this without the definition of the derivative. Um, that is using definition of the derivative. Are we okay with that?
Okay. All right. Let's move on. Now, these next two problems require calculators, so if you have yours uh, handy, that would be good. Number two, we have a pond that's seeded with a small fish. The logistics equation below represents the population at time t in months. Okay, it's pretty important to note what unit we are using. How many fish were put into the pond when it was seeded? How would we find that out? What would we do? We put in zero for t, right? That's what we would want to do. So let's do that. So p of zero is going to equal 2,000 over 1 plus 9 e to the zero. I mean, we don't even need a calculator for that, right? Because e to the zero is 1, and 9 times 1 is 1. So I'm looking at 2,000 divided by 10, or 200 fish. So according to the equation, they started with 200 fish. Is that OK? All right, so now how many were there at four months? So P of four equals 2,000 over 1 plus 9e e to the negative four. I would use a calculator for this. That would be fine. So we use a calculator, and we come out with, let's see, 1716.972. Um, it's an actual thing, right? Fish is a living thing, so we really wouldn't leave the answer like that. We would want to truncate. So we would be left with uh, 1716 fish at four months. Okay. Then it asks about a year. Now, we hopefully remember the equation is written in months, so we're not going to plug a 1 in, right? It's written in months, so we would have to plug a 12 in for 12 months. So P of 12 would be 2,000 over 1 plus 9 e to the negative 12. Okay, we put that in our calculator, and we get... 1999.889. Again, it's, a, it's an actual thing, right? It's a live thing. It's a fish, so we're not going to do um, portions. So we would just truncate, and it'd be 1,999 fish. Okay, and that's part B. Are we okay with that? Right, part C says explain this in terms of the limit as t goes to infinity of our, see this is our formula right here, the formula that we were given. So we're taking t to infinity, time to infinity. Think about that logistic growth model that I drew on the other slide. So there is a limiting number, right? There aren't going to be an um, infinite number of fish in the pond as time goes on to infinity. So we could take the limit. Why don't we do that? Practice with limits to infinity. We're, we'll, do, we'll be doing more limit stuff today. So let's just do that. The limit is t goes to infinity of 2,000 over 1 plus. Now I'm going to write e to the negative t as a positive exponent. So I'm just going to write it as 9 over e to the t. Maybe that will help a little bit in our work. So what is going to happen to this term right here, this part of it, as t gets larger and larger, what's going to happen to this fraction? It's going to tend to zero, isn't it? It's going to get smaller and smaller. It's going to tend to zero. So I'm basically going to be left with 2,000 over 1 plus zero, or simply 2,000. So what does that mean, 2,000? That means that that's the maximum number of fish. Right? That's what this equation is telling us, is that 2,000, so we want to explain it, so that's what we're doing. 2,000 is the maximum number of fish. So I showed it um, mathematically by finding the limit, and then I explained it verbally by just saying, what, what does that mean? Well, it means that 2,000 is the maximum number of fish for this model. Okay, are we okay with this logistic model? And that's the kind of problems you'll be working on this. It's just word problems like that, using your calculator. Okay? All right, the last one is, yes, again, find, um, this is an approximation, linear approximation. Yay, we know what that is, linear approximation. 
we are going to find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 2 and we're going to use it to estimate f of 2.1. We've done this several times before. This one will be calculator work though and we get to use my favorite equation of the line. Yes, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, we have x1 already. It's 2. Okay, we've got that part of the tangent line already. It's a 2. We don't know what y1 is and we don't know what m is. We can figure out y1 fairly quickly. Right, what if we just take the 2 and sub it into our formula? Right, so y1 would be f of 2. Right, we sub a 2 in here. So ln of 2 times 3, was it 6 minus 1, so 5. So f of 2 is ln 5. So y minus ln 5. Now if you don't want to write it in exact form, you could, you know, you could do a decimal and do an approximation if you wanted to. You just wouldn't want to round until the very end, right? We just want to leave everything accurate to the very end of the problem. Okay, so all we lack now is m and we know by now, right, where do we get m from? From the derivative, right? We have to find the derivative. Now this derivative we're not going to do by hand. We're going to use our calculator. Unfortunately, they have not installed my calculator back on my computer yet, so I can't kind of go through the steps with you, but let's, let me just talk you through them. So you would um, get your calculator, get to a clear screen. You would do math 8, math 8. Math 8 is the derivative button. And so it's going to give you something like d over d and then the blank, right? And then you have some kind of a blank here. And you have x equals blank. So here we'd put an x. You know, we're going to put the equation ln. 3x minus 1 here, and we're going to evaluate the, um, let's see, we're going to get the derivative at 2, at x equals 2. I'm just going to type that in your calculator. And when you do, you hit enter, and it should give you 0.6. And that should give you 0.6. And so we're going to put 0.6 here for m. This is our tangent line equation. That's it. Okay? Now, we're going to it said find the equation of the tangent line. We just did that. We're going to use it to estimate f of 2.1. That's what we're going to be doing. So step one, find the tangent line. We did. Step two, use it. I'm going to insert 2.1 where the x is. So I have y minus ln 5 equals 0.6 times 2.1 minus 2. So basically solving for y, I'm going to have ln 5 plus 0.6 times 2.1 minus 2. And this is just calculator work. I'm just going to put that in my calculator. I'm just going to type, you know, all that in, get the decimal approximation. So what that's going to tell me is what f of 2 is approximately. f of, excuse me, f of 2.1. f of 2.1 is approximately 1.6694. And that's our second purpose on here is to find the estimate of the y value of that function. Okay, how are we? Are we okay? Okay.